This is Electrobuff and welcome to my channel. I'll show you in this video how you can make a simple self-switching power supply with an output voltage designed for 12 volts but it can be configured for any output voltage. The voltage at the output is completely adjustable from about 5 to 12 volts. So the complete schematics is as shown. You don't need any IC for the project. So at the input you have your input mains. It can be anywhere from 100 to 240 IC. Then there is a fuse. Then there is this filter section made up of this capacitor, this common mode differential inductor and this capacitor. So what this does is that it eliminates the high frequency noise from interfering with the mains or any other appliances connected to the mains. Then after this you have a full bridge rectifier. Then there is a um, thermistor to limit the inrush current when the power supply is turned on and the input bulk capacitor begins to change up. So the main switching I see is this MOSFET, you can use the IRF840, they can handle about 8 amperes and have a drain source voltage reaching of about 500 volts. If you want more power, I recommend you use the IRF450P or the IRFP460, they can handle up to 50 amperes and they should be able to give you output power of more than 100 watts, preferably at around 150 watts. So the design is simple, so what happens is that the MOSFET will turn on due to this gate bias resistor R5, it's for 70 kilo ohms and this MORA resistor 1 kilo ohm. So when the MOSFET conducts current to flow through the, from the positive rail DC, through the primary winding, through the MOSFET and to ground through this current sensing resistor. So as the current increases, the voltage drop across this current sensing resistor will increase, the value is 0.5 ohms. And so at about 1.5 amperes, the voltage of this node will be sufficient enough to turn on this DC547 transistor. When it turns on, it will immediately connect the gate of the MOSFET to ground and the MOSFET will be turned on and it will be switched off completely. So when this happens, all the energy stored in the core of the transformer will be transferred to the secondary side. So also what happens is that when the current is ramping up in the primary before the MOSFET switches on is this feedback section here made up of this capacitor and so this ensures positive feedback and ensures that the MOSFET will turn on very fast and it will remain completely turned on until this capacitor discharges through this transistor BC547. So the power is transferred to the second side when the MOSFET is turned off and so on the second side you have this rectifier made up of these two diodes it's a package which contains two diodes in one you can use the MPR 1045 or any other diode package which can handle at least 5 amperes and has a voltage rating of at least 30 volts so then you have a small inductor to limit the inrush current on changing the output capacitor is a small road resistor for 70 ohms 5 watts and then at the output you have this feedback section made up of these two resistors. The R10 and R9 set up the minimum and maximum voltages, but this potentiometer allows you to adjust the voltage on the output side from about 5 to 12 volts. So you can change the value of the Zener diode depending on the adjustable output you want. Or if you want precision output, you can use the TL4 and 431 precision IC for the feedback. So when the voltage here is sufficient enough to open this inner diode, so the internal LED will turn on and this will cause this transistor to conduct and what this does is that it will connect to the base of the transistor to 5 volts from the auxiliary winding. So on the auxiliary winding you have a small rectifier diode and a small filter or storage capacitor. So when this transistor turns on, it will connect the base of the transistor to about 5 volts and it will conduct and immediately turn off this MOSFET. So this allows you to limit the duty cycle and thus regulate the output voltage. So current limiting is done by this resistor and voltage regulation is done by this feedback section with the optocopra. For the optocopra you can use this 4N35 or even you can use the readily available PC817. So basically that's all about this inverter project. 
in case you're interested this is how the pcb will look like if you want the pcb files just ask in the comment section and i'll upload them and that's all about this simple dc power supply and with that being said this marks the end of my tutorial don't forget to drop a like and subscribe to the channel and also click the notifications bell to get updated immediately when i upload new videos have a nice day